Hey, I'm Superdell. Okay, in my last video, we showed you my skill level so that you can compare my skill level to the skill level of other instructors. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you the skill level and many of the world records that a lot of my students have set so that you can specifically compare the skill level of those that I've trained to the skill level that others have trained. This is, again, one of the biggest things people fail on in when getting into the sport is they never even look at the actual skills. Well, buying training is buying skills. So it's absolutely critical that you look very closely at the skills of who you're talking to and the skills of those they claim to train. Anyone can claim to be an instructor. There is absolutely no license. So anyone claiming to be certified is totally flat out lying because there is no certification. There's nothing, it's just fake made up BS. So let's just get right to it and I'll start showing uh, what the skill levels look like and why and what the difference is and things to look for. So here we go, let's see. Start right out with, this is the world's youngest paramotor pilot, uh, set the world record at age 10. Now, you see someone flying and you don't realize the skill level. I personally don't like to see uh, the youngest kids flying type of videos because people chuck them in the air. So I am very specifically showing that this kid could literally kite up a pole and stand on top perfectly before he ever took his very first flights. So it's not about did you get him in the air, it's did you get them in the air with the right skill? If somebody's showing they're chucking a kid in the air but they don't show you skills like this, you know darn well that kid shouldn't be in the air. Okay, perfect run and jump, watch right here. Boom, see how he hesitated, changed directions. It's not just doing the technique perfectly, it's about the reflexes and that feel. Okay, Super Lee set the world record, 530 flights. That is a 16 square meter glider. He's flying at about 20, 25 mile an hour winds. Here's one of my students that was doing loops during his training. Not just mastered the skills, but loops. Uh, student doing a sat. This is a pretty uh, wild acrobatics maneuver. This is a brand new student with 10 days of training doing a sat and doing it perfectly and beautifully prepared with all the correct skills. Very, very critical that it's done with skills, not just chuck people into the air. Okay, brand new students making tandem instructor level. This is one of my students with only 10 days of training taking my wife tandem. And there is no way in heck I'm gonna let somebody take my wife tandem unless I am 100% positive in their skills and you can watch the hands constantly making little corrections and they're doing everything incredible skills and then of course very important to watch the landing because they better know what the heck they're doing if they're doing tandem and so they better be making very nice landings touches down piece of cake first tandem there should be no maybes on a tandem you don't learn how to do tandems tandems are just something you can do when you master the skills Okay, another world record, an entire class, all uh, doing, you know, synchronized uh, acrobatics maneuvers. Very, very uh, incredible. Now, this is a brand new student kiting on a post. Let's see any other instructor in the world getting students to this level in 10 days. Now, it's not just about getting off the ground. Watch the perfection of the landings and taking off, no torque, everything's beautiful, no oscillations. Watch this beautiful foot drag to landing, touches down. But super training is the only school in the world where you do this dropping glider size after glider size clear down to a 14 square meter. Okay, kiting up a vertical wall. Um, very high level of skill, absolutely critical skill because this is the skill it takes to prevent a collapse. It's also the skill it takes to make a perfect launch and perfect foot drag to landing while perfectly controlling the glider and not taking collapses. If you can kite up a wall and balance hanging off the side perfectly like that, all <laughs> without losing control and getting jerked all over the place, that is a sign someone is gonna be an incredible pilot, watch the flare to land, sets down light as a feather, 
absolutely beautiful. Same student, obviously we don't train you to kite up a trailer, we train the skill first. Kiting up a trailer is something you can do when you have the skill. So here he is kiting on a post, literally. So it's about the altitude control and loading control of the glider, perfectly maintaining perfect altitude of that glider. Okay, things like reverse kiting no hands. Let's see any other instructor in the world even do this. Very, very few in the entire world can even do this let alone their students. I bet you won't find any other instructor in the world doing that. Again, super student doing tandems. Again, this is my wife. This guy flew all the way down to a 14 square meter glider with perfect foot drags to landings and no oscillation. Now, when he switched to a much bigger glider, notice he's oscillating. We had a chat about that later because that's not where his skill level it is. It was just, he did that for the first flights, but notice as soon as he takes off, Bam, he pilots the glider, oscillation is gone, and he controls it perfectly. So that oscillation is not acceptable at all, uh, and that needs to be fixed. But again, look at that perfect foot drag to landing. It's also tandem, they go the wrong way, which wasn't his fault, it was the guy turning him, but notice he didn't freak out, panic, or lose control. Uh, here's a student learning how to do circle foot drags. This is an all-time world record, uh, circle wingtip drags and foot drags because you're talking about the world's youngest pilot in all of history to ever do a wingtip drag. Now, a wingtip drag is a or can potentially be a very dangerous maneuver. But right here, a 14 year old kid knocking out a wingtip drag, very few people in the world can do it. None can leave their glider down and do an infinity wingtip drag. Watch how long he holds this glider on the ground as he's going around. I mean, he's almost got half or 50% of an infinity wingtip drag. Uh, pretty much nobody in the world can even do that, let alone a 14-year-old um, student. So here he is flying around. The precision has to be incredible. If you hit the grounds at that speed, uh, it's not a good scenario. So 14-year-old setting an all-time world record. Again, you're looking for the transfer of skills. It doesn't matter if you don't want a wingtip drag. It's about the skill of the instructor. 14-year-old kid doing a wingtip drag, all-time world record. This is a really funny one. A 15-year instructor wandered by super training and started saying, oh, I can do anything your students can do. And so I challenged him right then and there to a competition head-to-head -head with one of my students. This is a guy, he's out there acting as an instructor right now as an expert. He's literally weight shifting backwards. He's doing it backwards. He's trying to keep the glider above him, but notice he's like yanking at risers, jerking on things. Here's my brand new student, of course, reverse kiting perfectly, no hands. Now watch, notice my student never touches the controls. This guy still can't even get the glider above him. Watch him touch the brakes. And of course, he can't do it. He hits the brakes again. He takes a collapse, unloading it. He's not doing it right. He keeps grabbing. He tries to flip around. He flips the wrong way. Totally wrong. Again, my student, brand new student. This student still hasn't even graduated yet. Still no hands. Hasn't touched the controls. Bam, guy touches the controls again. And again, <laughs> he cannot. So immediately again, see right there. So he's not controlling the glider at all, no hands. He's just letting it fall slowly, and as soon as it falls, he grabs the brakes because he doesn't even know how to properly control the glider. If you can't do this, you just don't have the ability to kite in no winds or fly in no winds or the ability to fly in high winds. The ability to weight shift perfectly is absolutely critical. So it's life and death critical that a student, that an instructor can do it and the students. I mean, a guy just takes collapses. Okay, big lie people use is, oh, you can't learn to train, you know, fly in Colorado by training at the beach. Well, here's the same kid who can kite up a pole at the beach and learned at the beach doing the exact same thing in the mountains of Utah. So yes, you can do exactly the same thing. Skill is skill is skill. The reason you go to the beach is so that you can practice upwards of nine hours a day controlling the glider. If you have no wind, there's no difference between wind at the beach and zero wind. The only difference is how fast your legs move. So when you get home, sure you can run and make your own wind, piece of cake for launch. 
Um, but obviously you don't wanna run 11 miles an hour, nine hours a day. Again, reverse kiting no hands, brand new students. Uh, reverse kiting no hands, you already saw a 15 year instructor who literally couldn't even do it. Try and find this in anyone else's videos. If they're claiming they're an instructor and training people, let's see their students do it. Again, yet another stupor student, kiting up a vertical wall, perfectly controlling it. And keep in mind, this is his first time. It's, you know, it's not like he's done this a hundred times. You master this skill, we'd never let you climb a trailer unless you actually have mastered the skill to do it. Um, but there you go. Not to mention the height of the, the trailer doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's one foot high or 10 feet high like a trailer, it's all about controlling the altitude of your butt. So we're not gonna have some 65 year old guy kite up a trailer, we're gonna have him sit there and practice controlling the altitude of his butt. Exact same skill, that is how you launch without taking a collapse. That's how you prevent a collapse in the air. Now this uh, student is on a 10 square meter speed glider, kiting up a trailer in over 25 mile an hour winds with beautiful control. Notice him perfectly controlling the loader, loading, he's controlling the altitude of his body perfectly, beautifully. You don't see him swinging back and forth. Notice he's not spread eagle. And of course, flares, lands, light as a feather. This is building skills. Now, here's a big one. Boom. It's one thing to show what your students do when everything's going right. He just got jerked off the ground, but landed it perfectly. No loss of control. Everything beautiful. It's about having reflexes. It's not about showing something when everything goes right. It's about the reflexes. Okay, 10 year old kid, again, kiting up uh, a table, another super student, kiting up a vertical wall, just demonstrating the sheer level of their skill in maintaining perfect loading of the glider, perfect directional control, or close to perfect, uh, as well as preventing collapses and controlling that altitude. Bam, light, lands light as a feather. Again, the controls of launch. Now, again, we don't make kids fly without absolutely incredible skills. <clears throat> so when you see one of, uh, you know, us, our kid flying or doing tandems, it's not that we're chucking them in the air to get a record. They have mastery level skills before we ever do it. So there, this uh, kid that just kited up the trailer, here he is as the youngest tandem paramotor instructor taking people tandem at age 13. And again, absolutely beautiful, no oscillation, perfect altitude control, watch this landing, sets him down, no problem, brings it to a stop, maintains beautiful control. There's no maybe if you're gonna do tandem, you better be dang close to perfect if you're gonna be doing tandems. So it is very upsetting to see people doing tandems who absolutely can't even kite up a trailer. So if you don't have even the basic skills, you absolutely should not be trying to do tandems if you can't even prevent a collapse. So again, same kid, 13 years old, world record, incredible tandem instructor level skills, taking people tandem, watch the landing closely, burns it in, perfect foot drag to landing. I mean, that's master level, maintaining perfect control, setting the glider exactly where he wants it, watch that landing again. See, that's altitude control. You don't learn that by doing uh, landings or flights. You learn it by walking up the trailer or actually practicing your butt control. Again, a 13 year old kid getting kisses from cute girls. I mean, it's invaluable. Super training makes you a hero. Now, brand new super students, literally ridge soaring while reverse off of a little sand dune. Running, jumping, landing exactly where he wants to, controlling the loading of the glider, controlling the altitude of his butt. This is the skill that allows you to prevent collapses in the air and you simply will not see this skill level at any other training in the world. It does not exist. They don't train you. You don't get 25 to 60 hours of practice. Now watch as he turns into a foot drag landing, beautiful landing, and then realize he's doing it on an extra, extra small glider. 
So it's one thing to make a sharp turn into landing, so you're literally flaring while going around a corner and making a perfect landing, but a whole nother deal to do that on an extra, 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 extra small. So Super Train is the only school in the world where your skills are progressing so that you can drop glider sizes. Again, ridge soaring backwards. Of course, we never let you go up that hill until you've mastered the skill, but lands, beautiful control, controlling the loading. Runs, jumps, this is actually a balloon, so he lands back on top, learning both techniques about how to fly down and how to fly out. Now watch right here, he's kiting back up, boom. That was a stall, instantly recovered it. That's reflexes. It's one thing to kite, but quite another to see someone recover from a stall instantly in a fraction of a second through reflexes. It's all about reflexes. Again, every single super student you need to be able to demonstrate skills like this before we ever put you in the air. Okay, all-time world record. Here's a super student that uh, is actually really cool. He does a wingtip drag, no hands. Uh, with super skills, you can literally touch the wing to the ground and bring it all the way back up without even using the brakes. And as you can imagine, if you can do that with no hands, just imagine what you can do when you add brakes to that weight shift capability. Again, ridge soaring, watch the landing. Does he get drug or pinpoint land perfectly holding that position? Bam, beautiful, lands perfectly, jumps. Lands beautifully under control, his butt's being carried by the glider, not standing lock-legged, flies, lands, and this is super high, it's probably like 18 mile an hour winds. Same guy coming in, foot drag to landing beautifully, and he's on an extra, 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 extra small. It's one thing for someone to take off and land on a huge, gigantic 30 square meter, but to be able to do this on a 16 square meter with no oscillation and perfect foot drags, no torque, that's what builds you into tandem instructor level. Same student, this is an all-time world record. He made tandem instructor level skills in four days. That's my daughter. He is taking tandem. There is no question he has the skills. There is zero concern for my daughter's safety. I train the guy. I know how good he is. I don't put people up with my children unless I know I've trained them correctly. This is huge. You will not see anywhere in the world people making tandem instructor level in four days, let alone 10 days. It just doesn't exist. If you ever want to fly tandem and have the skills to do it, Super training is literally your only option. Nothing else exists. Again, super student, standing on one foot, perfect control. I mean, the confidence is a whole different level, sets downs, not getting slammed around. It's beautiful. Okay, another world record. This is, again is another different 13-year-old kid doing a sat on a paramotor trike. For one, you'll pretty much never see anyone who, who will be able to do a, a sat on a trike, let alone a 13-year-old kid. Uh, this is a 14-year-old girl. She also set the world record as the youngest pilot uh, when she did it. This is several years ago. Again, forward launch beautifully. Beautiful control. You can watch the hands, making constant little adjustments. No oscillation. She comes in and lands. Messed it up because of her flare timing. She didn't foot drag to land, but she did it with perfect control um, and then worked towards that later. Now, new world record. This guy's uh, Super Jamie set a world record. This is his very first flight. And on his very first flight ever, he knocked out 77 touch and goes in a row without his glider ever touching the ground. So everybody's just a little irky-jerky on the first flights. It's kind of star fishing, but this is like flight 56. And you can see how as you go through flight after flight after flight, you start ironing in every tiny little detail of flare timing, which you've already learned. You're just translating that skill from the ground to the flight, which makes it happen much, much faster. Knocking out 77 in a row on his very first try without the glider touching the ground. That is glider control skill. You watch people chuck someone in the air and they hit the ground on landing and lose control of the glider. 
whole different world from a super student who lands, takes off, lands, all while maintaining perfect control, brings it down, sets. It's just, it's a whole different level. It's not about someone getting in the air. It's about someone mastering the skills so that they have the ability to prevent collapses and control that glider perfectly in any conditions. Another stu super student, Super Tom, very first flight, takes off. Again, this guy <laughs> set a new world record, uh, beating Super Jamie. Super Tom knocked out 271 flights in a row without his glider touching the ground. We actually have a camera on him and recorded the whole thing. 271 flights. We're not gonna show you all of them. It would take all day because he launched about noon and didn't land until dark, actually after dark. Um, very, very incredible. You can see it's already late in the evening. He's literally been knocking out touch and goes the entire day without his wingtip or wing touching the ground. We had to refuel him four times to keep him in the air, but he kept the glider up and stood there kiting. So here he is landing at night. You can kind of see the lights. Uh, he can see perfectly. It's no problem flying there. That was actually in Mexico. Again, another super student jumps, flies, lands perfectly. Uh, this is the same guy that set the world record making tandem instructor level in four days. Again, you're seeing beautiful control, loading control, not taking collapses. Uh, wingtip drags. It's just stuff like this. All these specific details, bringing the wingtip down, bringing it back up, all without losing control of the glider. And I show an unedited where you can see him doing it several times in a row. So it's not like taking a clip out of like 50 and showing one time when he got lucky. He's weight shifting perfectly. He's moving the correct direction. He's keeping the glider perfectly loaded. Notice he's moving forwards. He's perfectly replacing any lack of airspeed with ground speed. The, I mean, you watch other people claiming to be experts and they're missing so many pieces you don't even realize what you're looking at. When you're not a pilot, you know, you don't fully understand what you're looking at. Okay, again, brand new super student doing back flips and front flips. Yet another super student doing hardcore acro by the end of his 10 days, pulling up sat, but not just chucked up there, you just saw him doing back flips. So it's a guy who has mastered every detail of skill to build up to this level correctly. It's not about taking someone who doesn't know what they're doing and trying to chuck them into a maneuver to pretend you're setting records. It's about building actual skills. Uh, another super student doing a tandem, makes a tandem instructor level by the end of his 10 days. Again, watch the oscillation. On your first tandem, you're flying a pretty big glider, but as soon as you get in the air, so it's a little weird at first, but watch the landing. Sets it down beautiful, which there should be no question you're gonna land it. I mean, you see other people falling down during landing. He, of course, nails it beautifully there. Super training, biggest class in the world. Nobody trains, well, no other schools train people properly. Again, all of the students doing the same maneuver. It's one thing to show one student doing a wingtip touch, but for all of them to do it in unison at the same time while maintaining position with other students, it's a whole completely different level. You're not taking a clip of a half a second where the guy got lucky. That's not it. It's about having the skill. Watch as they all separate in unison and bring it out. This guy's actually on a high aspect ratio comp glider the psycho glider of death, which we like to give you if you get overconfident. But again, matching all the other students and maintaining a position, all doing foot drags at the exact same time. It's about a total actual skill level to reflexes where you actually maintain real control because you were trained. The word trained would be assessing that you've actually learned the skill. If you don't have skill, you have not been trained. So there's so many people out there pretending to be instructors, but they're not training anyone. Again, foot drags from brand new students, which you just don't see anywhere else, but you don't learn to do a foot drag by doing a foot drag. 
This skill is mastered on the ground by controlling perfectly the altitude of your butt, give or take one inch, while you're maintaining perfect loading control of the glider. So then transferring that skill to the foot drag is very simple and it happens very, very quickly to be able to maintain a perfect altitude above the ground. Well, that skill is exactly what allows you to just launch and land. So you get some 60 year old saying, oh, I don't wanna do foot drags. I just wanna fly straight and level. I don't need the best. Yes, because flying straight and level is exactly the same skill just to land. Again, each of the students landing one after another. This is not taking a clip, you know, where they blew 50 launches and then got lucky and you show the one where they got lucky. This is every student getting to fly together with the instructor because they've actually become pilots. Um, again, another world record. One thing to do a foot drag, which pretty much very almost no students can do, but to do a foot drag in a circle on your eighth day of training, this is an all-time world record. When you're looking at the skill level of instructors, ask them to show you a video of themselves doing a circle foot drag. You have to maintain perfect altitude, give or take basically one inch, while flying downwind, crosswind, back into the wind, and back through your wake. And this is where that skill is learned. It's all about controlling the altitude of your butt, give or take one inch. Notice she loses it, but what you see is she maintained control. It's not about just keeping the glider up. It's about what happens when you get yanked into the air with a gust and that you maintain perfect control. Again, students kiting on one post. This girl, 13-year-old girl, brand new super student, and she's literally kiting on poles beautifully. Again, she loses it, but notice that did not mean she lost control. It means she came off the pole. Uh, now she's kiting up a trailer. Obviously, we wouldn't let her do that unless she has absolutely mastered the skill, which is obvious. Maintaining perfect control, perfect loading. You don't see her swinging back and forth, sliding up and down. Her butt's staying at the same altitude. Beautiful landing, controls the glider. Little surge, that's not acceptable. She should have fixed that. But again, kites up the trailer, regains, because you're dragging yourself up. Then you have to perfectly stop on the edge and maintain that perfect loading. Before we'd ever let you do this, you basically have to be able to kite all day perfectly without ever, 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 not even once losing control of that glider. Again, she takes off on a trike just beautifully because she can kite up a trailer. It's not about showing someone getting off the ground. It's about the fact that they have the skill to be able to do this correctly. You do not just chuck someone in a trike and tell them to hit the throttle. They need to master the skill of controlling the glider or this gets really, really ugly. What you don't see is the biggest hidden cost in the sport is who pays for repairs of the gear. So you try and train anywhere else, they're gonna make five to $25,000 off you, charging you to repair the gear you totally destroy because they didn't teach you how to control the glider. But bam, youngest female paramotor pilot in the world at that time, high fives. Okay, doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, doesn't matter if you weigh 300 pounds, skill is skill is skill. Uh, again, those skills all translate into building towards tandem instructor level so that you can take passengers. And we do not let you take passengers until you have absolutely mastered the skills and graduate in glider sizes, clear down to extra, 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 extra smalls. Takes off. Beautiful, not too shabby, dang good. The, uh, you're looking for oscillation, you're looking for altitude control, and then maintaining perfect loading and altitude. You don't wanna see them diving at the ground and climbing and diving. Again, beautiful landing, nailing it perfectly. You don't go taking girls tandem if you, don't, if you can't even reverse kite no hands or kite up a pole. You're an irresponsible jerk if you go getting people to trust you with their life when you do not have the responsibility for that life. Boom, takes off, controlling the glider, a little bit of an oscillation there, that's a problem. 
perfectly controls it as soon as he leaves the ground. That takes skill. You're actively and perfectly piloting the glider. Again, beautiful landing. He's already done it hundreds and hundreds of times perfectly, or we'd never let him fly tandem. Brings the glider down. Beautiful, perfect control. This is what real training looks like. It's about building real actual skills to where you can have smiles and have fun and all the chicks dig you. <laughs> if you look like a moron, it does not make the sport look good. Uh, 300 pound pilot takes off, piece of cake. What do you run, 15 feet? Nothing, no problem. This is literally probably his first flight, but beautiful because he has the skills. Now here's a good example. Passenger doesn't even put her feet down, falls down, super student maintains perfect control. He does not lose control because the passenger fell down. You have to be able to maintain such beautiful control with such incredible reflexes that no matter what your passenger does, you instantly have the reflexes to respond to it and perfectly control it. So that's what real skill actually looks like. Training is about buying skills. When you're buying training, you're buying skills. And so you better look very specifically at the skills other students have received from that training. Are people literally making tandem instructor level in 10 days by the end of that training? Or can they not even show one single person kiting up a pole or reverse kiting or kiting in high winds, let alone perfectly controlling the altitude of their butt, let alone doing circle foot drags? Almost no instructors out there have even the most basic skills. I just showed you what real actual skills and control and reflexes look like. Now take these and shoot, email it to every instructor you might consider and say, show me your instructors doing what these brand new students can do and what these students are doing. If their instructor can't even do what my students are doing, how can they even call themselves an instructor? You hear people say that use the word scam a lot in this sport. Well, a scam, you know, ripping someone off on a toaster is one thing, but a scam of promoting yourself as an instructor when you literally don't have even the most basic skills and have never trained even one single person to have real actual skills, that is a scam. It's not about Ford versus Chevy. You don't hear, you know, BMW calling Mercedes a scam. You know, maybe if you understood every detail and you might understand at deeper level, but it's not about, oh, both of them are good. Either one will be just fine. That's not it. We're not talking about, you know, equals for equals. We're talking about real actual training, which results in actual skills versus stuff that's so horrifying. They literally don't have the most basic skills themselves. You won't even get one to three hours of actual practice with the glider, let alone actually learn anything or develop any skill or any ability to prevent a collapse. Seven more people just died. Every single one of them was because they had no ability to prevent the collapse because they did not have real skill because they never had a stitch of real training. And if you research it and look at who their instructors were, you're gonna notice none of their instructors were even able to do what brand new super students can do. That is a scam. They are scamming people to death. They are pretending to be instructors when they absolutely are not even pilots. They wouldn't even graduate super training. In fact, there are literally people out there acting as instructors right now who flunked super training. As in, they came through super training and did not pass the class and went right out and started pretending to be instructors. It is, it's worse than you realize. It's like you get into the sport and you just want to naturally assume, oh, everybody's basically honest and anyone calling themselves an instructor must know what they're doing. Or you hear people say, oh, he's been flying 20 years. He must know what he's doing. 
No, false. If you're doing it wrong for 20 years and you've never taught even one single person real actual skills because you don't have them, that is not okay. You cannot just assume that someone knows what they're doing. You have to use your brain. If you don't have the logical intelligence to research skill against skill and see who actually is training people versus who absolutely is not training people, you don't belong in aviation. The only place in aviation for people that aren't that bright is in a box six foot under the ground. And that's where people that aren't that bright end up. Aviation is not for average people. It's not for below average. It's for people that are a little bit sharper, a little more elite, a little more intelligent, a little quicker, not stupid people who are emotionally weak that would get angry and upset by someone claiming they're the best. One should be happy that someone says they're the best. Because if you claim to be the best, it makes it super duper simple to prove either they are or they're not. If someone else can show their students demonstrating better skills, well, then they're a better instructor if they're honest and it's legit. But super training, you can find, I've got over 900 videos. You can see basically the whole history of the sport in my videos. So don't be gullible or foolish use your head and use me. Call me, 800-707-2525. It's not a sales pitch, but don't you think it would make sense to actually learn the questions to ask? I will actually help you research. I will help you know how to double check if I'm telling the truth and ask you to research because you absolutely should never just blindly trust someone with your life. So what better way than to call the guy who's doing what nobody else on earth can do and the guy whose students are doing what no other training class in the world has produced and talk to that guy to find out what you need to look for and why. In aviation, you have to have the mental stability to be able to deal with confident, you know, positive, enthusiastic, outgoing personalities. If you're offended by someone trying to save your life, you are too stupid for aviation and you don't belong in the sport. Just look at my last video where I showed clear as can be a pile of things that I'm doing that nobody else on earth can do. Notice in all of the comments, not one single comment from anyone in the world posted a video and showed someone else beating what I showed. Any logical, rational, and honest person is going to focus on the truth, not how they feel about it. So if somebody's focusing more on how they feel about me saying I'm the best versus the fact of whether I am or am not the best, that is the type of person that does not belong in aviation. Those are the type of people that end up dead. They're letting their emotional behavior dictate them as opposed to looking at things logically and factually. Because when you take a major asymmetric collapse and you're 30 feet off the ground, you can't scream racist bigot and think it fixed everything. It doesn't work. That is not the type of person that belongs in aviation. You need to have learned those skills into reflexes from the only person in the world teaching it. Am I the only person that's really teaching true, real skills to students? Look it up. I know it's true because I have vast experience, but I would love to promote somewhere else. If there's someone on the other side of the world that I don't know about, Show me the video, post the video. It's not about ego saying I'm better, he's better, I'm better. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your life. Either I am the best instructor, in which case you should be working with me no matter where you are in the world, or I'm not the best instructor and there's others that are just as good and you can show it. An intelligent, honest person is going to show the video. They're not the person that bashes and trashes and lies and start making up lies about me. 
that has no value or validity whatsoever. The only fact that matters is either I am providing the best training or I'm not, or there's others who are doing as good of a job. If there's someone else getting students to these skill levels, show me, post the video, link it in the comments. If you don't link a video, whatever you said was invalid. No amount of trash talking has any value at all. All it shows is your sheer level of ignorance and mental instability. Calling people names does not save anyone's life. Demonstrating skills and warning people of what skills your life depends on and who really is teaching those, that's what your life depends on. So when you wanna get flying and do the coolest things on the planet, you gotta get with someone that actually cares enough to make sure they're gonna do that job correctly and make sure you have the right skills before you get in the air. So give me a call, 800-707-2525 and we will do it right, just as I've been doing for years and years and years and years with so many other students who have literally set world records.